Well, hello folks. Hello and welcome back to In The Loop TV episode two. Hopefully you got a chance to watch episode one. If you haven't, I'm sure there's a link below. You can go in there, you can watch episode one. You can watch it before episode two. You can watch it after episode two, or you can watch it during episode two if you got two monitors and that's what your preference is. But I suggest to go back and watch that. There's some good information of what this vlog is gonna be about. In The Loop TV, I'm your host, Don Grant, National Applications for the Harvey Performance Company, known as the Cutting Tool Counselor, here to counsel you through all your applications. Can't wait to dive into episode two and get into the technical stuff. Stick around, we're gonna dive into it next. Well, hello folks. Hello and welcome back to our second episode of In The Loop TV. This is gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna talk about flute count. Flute count on end mills. What's a flute? Let's dive into that. Now, flutes are one of the easiest things to recognize on an end mill. These are the deep grooves that are in the side of the end mill, the solid carbide or high-speed steel that allow the tool to hold on to chips, evacuate the chips, and actually make the chips. Very interesting, and this is what we're gonna talk about in this episode. How do we use these flutes? What's critical to using these flutes? And how do you use them in your application to be more efficient at that spindle? So, let's run to the shop, talk about flute count in a little bit more detail. So folks, what's happening when we're adding flutes or what are we looking at with the flute valley and why do we do it and what does it do to the end mill when we add flutes or take away flutes? Well, number one is when we add flutes because of the depth of the flute, there's less space in there so we need to make the core larger. When we make the core larger because we added flutes, we make the end mill stronger. Now the argument there, the argument or the subset of that for some of the old school machinists out there is when you add flutes, sometimes we have this perception and it is true that we're adding tool pressure because there's points of contact on the flute that are actually touching our material and the more of those points of contact, the more tool pressure we're adding. But again, I said when you add flutes, the core gets larger. So what you're doing is in introducing one issue that we had a long time ago, which is tool pressure, and you're combating it with core strength. See how that works? So folks, we're talking about flute count on an end mill. And how do we decide how many flutes we want on our end mill to be most efficient at our spindle? Well, there's two really important deciding factors in figuring out how many flutes we want on our end mill. Okay, number one, and not as critical as number two, and I'm gonna drive number two home very, very much so after we get through number one, but number one is material, right? We need to know what material we're actually cutting because it's gonna make a difference with the flute count to be most efficient. That's number one. Number two, and most important to picking out a flute count on an end mill is tool path. Tool path, tool path, Tool path, tool path. So let's briefly touch on material, and I mean very briefly. And the reason for this is, is because now with modern technology and with the tool paths that we just talked about that are created through all these new CAM packages, we can use any flute count we want and any material depending on what you're running. So don't get too caught up on material, but it is very important. So again, when we're talking about material, right? In the beginning of this episode, I said, one of the key features that a flute does is it holds the chip. Well, when we're running softer or gummier materials or aluminums or maybe some 1018 steels, we can get more aggressive, which means we can take bigger chips. And if we can take bigger chips, guess what? We don't need as many flutes and the material's a lot softer, and if the material's a lot softer, I don't need as many flutes to give me a stronger end mill. So the goal here is, is to remove material as efficiently as possible. And oh, we Whoa. want to hold up just a minute. I can't grunt. 
It's trademarked. Sorry. So when we talk about toolpath, there's several different toolpaths, right? When you're using an end mill in a machine, we have slotting, which is old school cutting where you take an end mill and just plow the material out. You have traditional roughing, which is a little bit lighter axial and a heavy radial. You have HEM or high efficiency machining. You have finishing. Don't forget ball nose. You have surfacing. So all these tool paths, depending on what strategy you want to use, is going to play in part of how many flutes I want to put in my end mill. Now, can you get away with three flutes in one application and seven flutes in that same application? You can. You have to apply it differently. You have to take different axials, radials, and everything else, which we're going to dive into. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and help you right now in this tutorial, in this vlog, to pick out the right flute counts specific with examples I'm going to give you in each one of those operations. So here's an example. You call me up. The first thing I ask you, what's your material? You say 4140 alloy steel. We know that's a mild steel. It's all good. The next thing I'm going to ask you is what is your tool path? You tell me it's slotting. So let's put those two together. We know we have a mild alloy steel. Of course, I need to know what the Rockwell is and your slotting. Slotting demands a lot of chip room because we're actually taking that off. Now in 4140, I know you can go one times D, which is at least using half inch end mill. You can go a half inch deep. It's going to make a lot of chips. So I really don't want to put that many flutes in there because I need the chip room. Three, four, maybe five. As the material gets gummier, we want less than five. Gummy material, you're going to not, uh, you're not going to have good luck with anything over four flutes in gummy material. You're going to want to stick below that, especially at one times D. Now you call me back. Let's change the scenario. You say you're cutting something a little bit harder. Either it's heat treated or it's 718. I know I can't do one times D there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more flutes because when the chips become less of a problem and we don't have that much problem evacuating the chips, I can put more flutes in there. And when I put more flutes in there, because we're not going as deep, I give you a larger core, as we talked about before. I give you more cutting edges, more strength. Your tool is going to last longer and it's going to work a lot better. So even if you're surfacing with an end mill, let's say you're trying to get a surface, you're using a ball nose. Does flute count matter when you're surfacing? Absolutely it does. Why does it? Well, there's three axis machines, there's four axis machines, and there's five axis machines. Why is that critical? Well, a three axis machine is taking a ball nose and setting it straight up, which means it's essentially cutting on the bottom, which is not giving you a lot of chip room. Therefore, I want to use the least amount of flutes for something like that. If I'm in a five axis machine and I have the ability to tilt and I have the ability to go 10, 15, 20 degrees, I get to use the side of the end mill or the side of the sphere or the side of the ball. I can afford to put some more flutes in there. There's a caveat. What's the caveat, Mr. Grant? The caveat is, is am I roughing with that ball nose? Am I semi-finishing semi with that ball nose or am I finishing? If I'm finishing, I'm going to put some more flutes in there. And even when we get into finishing on the side of the end mill, we're going to add more flutes. I'll explain why on the finishing side a little bit later. But we can do that. Once we tilt the ball nose, we can put more flutes in there, especially if we're finishing. So you know how I say everything's based on toolpath. Why is it based on toolpath? Number one is you're going to tell me what these toolpaths are, but those toolpaths come with three things that I'm really curious on, right? It has an axial depth, which is how deep are you going? It has a radial step over, which how much material am I going to take off the side? And then it has a feed per tooth, right? Those three things are very important to understand how many flutes to put in your material. So now let's jump into high efficiency machining. And then maybe there's some of you out there that says, what is high efficiency machining? Real simple concept on this. I don't want to dwell on it because it could be a good area for another episode. High efficiency machining is where I'm using the whole length of cut on the end mill, which means all of the LOC of the end mill. And I'm taking a light radial to actually run as fast as I can. And then there's something called chip thinning which we're not going to dive into. But seeing as the fact that I want to use the whole length of cut on the end mill, which means I'm starting to go a lot deeper and I'm taking a light radial, 
What do you think I need to get that tool not to deflect? I need core strength. Hmm. Well, if we need core strength, I think I was telling you earlier in the episode, a good way to get core strength is to add flutes. Well, if we add flutes, we're going to get more core strength. And if we're taking a light radio with high efficiency machining, then we don't need the chip room and we can add more flutes. Gives you strength, gives you speed, great for high efficiency machining. So, okay, I think I've thrown a lot of information and it's kind of been a little bit scattered, hopefully enough where you pick some good information out of that that can help you move on. But what's the meat and potatoes? Okay, here's where I want you guys to close the door. I don't want you to share this with anybody. I'm gonna give you some inside tips and tricks to help you machine a little bit better with flute count. Okay, tip number one, and trust me when I tell you this, I'm not crazy. This is the truth. As a matter of fact, I had a boss once told me that there was always one crazy person in every shop. I could never find that guy, never. But anyway, I digress, let's move on. Okay, tip number one, here's the inside stuff. Let's talk about slotting. Remember I talked about slotting and core strength and everything else and making sure we can get the chips out. When you are slotting with a miniature end mill, let's say an eighth of a diameter or below, I'm gonna tell you, always side with the most amount of flutes that you can find in miniature end mills. Now let me explain why, right? The whole deal is to make sure we can get the chips out and evacuate the chips. When you're within miniature end mill, one eighth and below, and the reason I bring this up is Harvey Performance has some great miniature end mills, five flutes, four flutes down to 7,000 diameter, so you can get a large amount of flutes in there. Miniature end mills are not slotting, they're making a slot. There's a big difference, let me explain. When you're making a slot and not traditionally slotting, your axial depth on a miniature tool is gonna to be very light. When your axial depth is very light and it's a miniature tool, it doesn't have a lot of strength, add as many flutes as you can. Trust me on this. If it's miniature, one eighth and below, I don't want you to look at the three, the four flutes. I want you to look at the five, the six, and the seven when you're slotting with a miniature tool. You will thank me, that's tip number one. Okay, tip number two. When we look at flute count, sometimes we look at speed, right? It equates to speed. How many flutes do I have? I can run faster by adding a flute. But let's look at it the other way in, in terms of strength, okay? Perfect example, had a customer who's running a six flute. Cycle time was perfect, didn't have any issues with the cycle time, wanted more tool life. Within the recommended parameters for that tool, all we did was throw in a seven flute instead of a six flute. We got a stronger core, which I said, remember when you jump up in flute count, we get a stronger core, which means that tool was stronger. We added a flute, so the load on each one of those teeth was reduced. So it's almost like playing basketball, two teams, and adding an extra guy on one team. You're making that team a lot stronger to go against the other one, and at the end, you win. What do you win? You win tool life. I hope you're enjoying the vlog in the loop TV hosting myself from Harvey Performance Company. If you are, please hit the subscribe button down there. You're going to get notified. Hit the like button over here and just let us know what you think. Even if you want to put something in the comments, I appreciate that. It is a kid show kind of, so keep it clean, please. Please do that. And uh, come back for episode three. Well, folks, that's it. Fun with flute count. Episode two. Hope there was a lot of good information in there. Hope you had some fun. The goal here is to have some fun, be entertaining, but also learn something as we go. So I hope you really did. Okay, folks, well, we're looking forward to episode three. And one thing with episode three that I wanna do is something a little bit different. And I know we've only been into this two episodes so far that I hope you're enjoying. But what I'm gonna do is kind of take what's in my head and teach you something that I do at the spindle to solve problems. It's called the MRR triangle. I'm gonna teach you how to do that. We're gonna take it from my brain, put it on your screen, and hopefully you'll have a better understanding how to dissect problems at the spindle and what process to go through to get better tool life. But before that and before I go, I just wanna leave you with one thing. There's three things in life that we'll never get away from. Death, taxes, and spring passes. Have a great rest of your week.